Hey guys, in this video I'm going to teach you how to install WordPress manually. Some of you on your servers have the ability to do a one-click WordPress install, in which case you should just log into your server and go ahead and do that via cPanel. But if you want to know how to do it manually, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So this video assumes a couple of things. One, that you know how to use FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. That's the method for uploading files directly to your server. And the other is that you understand how to work with databases and that you've already created a database for your website. So here we are. This WordPress site is going to be at the domain buddyboss.com slash test site. I've already uploaded all of the WordPress files via FTP, and now it says uh, it's giving me this error, which I expect to get, which says there doesn't seem to be a wp-config.php file. So we're going to head on over to my FTP program. Uh, this program is called Transmit, which is my favorite FTP program for Mac. And I've uploaded all of the WordPress all the files that make up WordPress are right here. This is If you go to wordpress.org and download WordPress and you unzip the file, this is what you're going to get. And in here, just to give you a little overview, index is what is the root file in the directory that loads WordPress. Um, WP admin is the folder that contains all of the contents that make your administration section when you log into WordPress. WP content is what holds all of the actual content of the site. So it holds the plugins, the themes, and as you start actually using the site, it'll create folders for, for other things, such as uh, uploads for all your media. And then WP Includes contains a bunch of uh, functions that plugins and themes hook into for WordPress. So in this area, you basically don't want to edit any of this stuff except for a few areas. WP Content you can go into sometimes, WP Config, which we're about to use, and HD access. The rest of this you basically want to leave alone and never touch because when you run a WordPress update it's likely that a lot of these files will get overridden by, by what WordPress does. So we're going to start with WP config sample. I'm going to open this up and the program I'm opening in is called Sublime Text 2 which is the second version of Sublime Text and is my favorite uh, text editor for the Mac. Um, and so here they give you sort of a, a dummy configuration file. And the purpose of this is to make it easier for you to, to hook WordPress into your database so that when you create content in WordPress, it'll actually write to the database. So it gives us lines for the database name, database user, database password, and host name. The host name, in most cases, you can just leave at localhost. Certain web hosts, you have to change this, like GoDaddy has custom host names you have to put in. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this file and I'm going to rename the duplicated file wp-config.php because if you remember over in uh, Chrome it says that's the file we're missing wp-config.php so if I refresh this page now it recognizes the file but says error establishing a database connection and why does it say that well the reason is because uh, this wp-config.php has does not have the database credentials in here. So I mentioned before, I'm assuming that you've already gone in to your web host and created a database, and when you did, it would have asked you to create a database name, a database username, and a database password. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in uh, the ones I created, and I'll have to blur this for the final video so that you guys can't see uh, my information. And then when I come back here and refresh it, it brings me to a WordPress install screen. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and create my WordPress site. So I'm going to title the site uh, Buddy Boss Test Site, and then I'm going to create a username and a password. I really recommend not using the username admin. You should create your own unique username because um, malicious computer programs that try to hack into WordPress have to guess the username and the password to get in. Uh, if they do a brute, brute force attack, and if the user, if if they assume the username is admin, then they only have to guess one thing. If you have a unique username, then it's that much harder. So create your own username and create a password that you'll remem remember and that is secure, and then type in your email, and then allow search engines to index the site. That would be um, if you want Google to be able to find your site and have it show up in search results. I'm going to uncheck this since this is just a test site and I don't want it to show up on Google. And success! I have installed WordPress. So now I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I'll log in with the credentials that I gave it. 
And here I am. WordPress is set up. I can click visit site and see the front end. And here it is running 2013, which is the current default WordPress theme. And in a future video, I'll teach you how to actually configure WordPress.